A lot of the times whenever I sit down to make these videos for YouTube, it feels a little like walking on a tightrope. And that on the one hand, I want to be economic in the way that I express my opinions, whereas on the other hand, I don't want to do so to such an extreme degree that I neglect crucial content. So I've decided to experiment a little, and if this works out, it's going to become customary for longer videos in the future. What I've done is I've written out a statement. Originally, I intended just to read it off like a soliloquy, but I don't think I'll proceed in that fashion. That would be a very monotonous monologue. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference these as though they were a series of note cards. And it's not prepared in that kind of format, but it does contain some interesting statistics that I think you may find quite neat. I know that they were fascinating to me, that I enjoyed very much researching them, and that I had reliable sources for the information that I have prepared here. And they will be included in the information bar. In any case, hope Hopefully this will allow me to collate my thoughts so that I can express them more eloquently and economically. Now, quite some time ago, I engaged in an abortion debate on a political forum. And it became a very productive dialogue when people started making subtle concessions. But we got off to a rocky start because one of the earliest posters initiated an ad hominem campaign against pro-life individuals. Now, he accredited his approach to Noam Chomsky in a documentary called The Lake of Fire. But specifically, this ad hominem was the appeal to hypocrisy, where he wrote that people who are against abortion don't tend to do things like send food or money to help Haitian orphans. They instead spend their time supporting capital punishment and advocating war. They don't show any concern for the thousands of women who he says will die if we outlaw abortion. And if they really wanted to save lives, they would be trying to save the lives that they can save instead of campaigning and wasting their energy to stop an operation like abortion, which is utterly inexorable. And to buttress this idea that you can't stop abortion simply by banning it or taking, say, economic uh, steps against it, he cited a study which he claimed showed that legality has no effect on whether or not a woman obtains an abortion, that she does not even consider whether or not the operation is safe and legal before deciding to obtain it. He followed up by making the wire hanger appeal, writing that prior to Roe v. Wade, 10,000 women died every year in botched abortion attempts uh, by amateur back alley butchers. He says that if we allow Roe v. Wade to be overturned, then the blood of 10,000 women a year will be on our hands, and we will have effectively skewered them on the tips of a wire hanger. That's his imagery, not mine. First off, I want to briefly note that if we overturn Roe v. Wade, that does not necessarily mean that abortion would become illegal. Now, I mean, overturning Roe v. Wade is definitely a prerequisite, prerequisite to outlawing abortion, but these two separate things are not one and the same. There would have to be an additional Supreme Court case on behalf of the fetus. And since a fetus doesn't have standing, it's not a citizen, this probably isn't going to happen. And in all likelihood, pro-choice states would probably remain pro-choice. And it's only states like Oklahoma that would turn around and ban abortion. And even that would take time. So in regards to this accusation of apparent hypocrisy on the pro-life movement, I think that's probably valid. There's hypocrisy in every political movement, but I'm not convinced that hypocrisy is a necessarily bad thing. I think that this is a Judeo-Christian Muslim assumption that has infiltrated our supposedly secular society. And in any case, it's completely irrelevant. It's an attack on character. Demonizing the opposition is not a logical approach to any argument. Now, after having rediscovered this dialogue, I went and I did some research to figure out where he got his 10,000 a year statistic. And according to Fact Checker, the figure comes from a 1936 study which concluded that abortion claimed the lives of five to 10,000 women every year. Now, the doctor who, conduct, who conducted this study actually admitted that the number was very hazy, but his estimates were nevertheless plausible in that time period because things like penicillin would not be widely available until 1945 and the first oral contraceptive, uh, oral contraceptive was 12 years slower. So they didn't have modern medical technology at the time and they didn't have easy access to contraceptives, thus illegal abortions were higher and the death rates within those abortions were also higher. Nevertheless, Penicillin and contraceptives did eventually come out, and when they did, this study was rendered more or less instantly obsolete. In 1969, Christopher Tietze, a leading authority in abortion trends, wrote, Some 30 years ago, it was judged that such deaths from illegal abortions might number 5 to 10,000 per year. But this rate, even if it was approximately true at the time, cannot be anywhere near the true rate now. 
TT claimed that the actual number of deaths as a result of abortion probably numbered in the hundreds, but not the thousands, and this was buttressed by Stanley Hinshaw, an abortion statistic expert at the Guttmacher Institute. Now, I have heard it argued that the reduced abortion mortality rates were due to the liberalization of abortion laws on a state level, but this is simply false. To cite the fact checker once again, from the 1940s through the 1960s, evidence shows a dramatic decline in abortion-related deaths occurring before, that's their emphasis, not mine, the first states liberalized abortion laws in 1967. The Journal of the American Medical Association quotes official estimates from the National, uh, from the National Center for Health Statistics showing an 89% decrease in abortion-related deaths by 1966, end quote. 1966, this is a year before the laws began to be liberalized. Now, why do we still cite these obviously Stone Age statistics? Well, they were in large part proliferated by NARAL, whose co-founder Bernard Nathanson later claimed that the pro-choice movement had intentionally proliferated a known falsehood for the sake of political gain. In his expose, Aborting America, he wrote, I confess that I knew the figures were totally false, and the others did too, but, the, but in the morality of our revolution, it was a useful figure. But, the, but what were the real numbers of abortion-related deaths prior to Roe v. Wade? According to the Center for Disease Control, there were 88 abortion-related deaths in 1972, the year before Roe v. Wade. But less than 40 of these were the result of illegal abortions. The rest were uh, the result of legal abortions. Now, this doesn't mean that legal abortions are more dangerous than illegal abortions. It just happened that more women were having legal abortions than illegal, so it follows that more women would be dying from those operations. I don't want people to get any weird ideas. Um, in any case, the statistics clearly show that if legalizing abortion mitigates the number of women dying from, uh, dying from abortions every year uh, at all, it does so in a very negligible way. It doesn't make a major difference whatsoever. The statistics, the numbers don't change. Um, so what about this, uh, this back alley butcher claim? Well, fortunately, it's another myth. Alfred Kinsey estimated in the 1950s that around 85% of illegal abortions were performed by prof professional physicians. And in 1960, Mary Calderon, former director of Planned Parenthood, wrote, quote, The conference estimates that 90% of uh, all illegal abortions are presently being done by physicians. Call them what you will, abortionists or anything else, they are still physicians and trained as such. And many of them are even in good standing with their communities. They must do a pretty good job if the death rate is, lo is as low as it is. Abortion, whether therapeutic or illegal, is, the is, uh, uh, is in the main no longer dangerous. But what about the study that supposedly claims that the legality of abortion has no effect on whether or not a woman decides to have one? I will discuss that in my next segment.